folks, how you doing, Captain Mark Kid, Kid, Kid Co Outdoors? Blowing like a bass out there. It's been a horrible season to use the old tuna gear right here. I ain't done. It's not happening, all right? Hey, we got a couple of nice ones up top there. We're going to throw plugs and stuff. Didn't happen. It is howling. 13 foot seas out in the ocean right now. What? I guess that they should my most. So, what are we doing? See all those rods right there? Black fishing. Right around the corner. A couple of days, a couple of weeks, we're in it, all right? So, you guys got to be prepared. More importantly, this episode is sponsored by our friends over here at Tidal Tales, Johnny Knight. He's banging out the premier blackfish jigs so get yours right there www.tiletales.com nobody better in the business all right so let's get on with it all right what's this episode it's gonna be quick you guys have seen me for those of you who fish with me and those who see me fishing this is what i do i hang these up on the boat and we work out all right what is this right here let's take this guy in particular this is what we're gonna learn today this is the many to mooch snafu rig for you italians all right i'm gonna show you the easiest way to do it the quickest way to do it and how to implement it on your rod right there, okay? That's this episode alone. The snafu rig, the easiest way to make sure you have two exactly perfect hooks, all right? One's not longer than the other, and it's fugazi, all right? They're perfectly matched hooks right there, as you can see. They're gonna go into the crab just like that. It's gonna be a scary monster for that crab, I tell you that, all right? So what are we using here? Right there, Gamagatsu. Five odd hooks, octopus, all right? These are awesome, own makes awesome hooks too. Don't get crap, Gamagatsu owner, car you know just get the good stuff all right but right here this is what i use i buy them in the 25 packs and i just start tying rigs here all right so what are we using we're using this rig right here and we're going to show you how to use that you've seen episodes with me where i use hard line here this is a leader material it's not it's kind of translucent that's what i use if i'm using charters and you have beginners out there i'm going to use that stuff but what am i going to use here today this is it right here 30 pound monofilament that's all we're gonna need all right so let's get to it remember my old video this little technique this works like a champ by the way it works so well i don't even know where the heck the uh freaking there it is there it is all right that's my little technique of how to keep that from spooling out let me take the first hook out boom here we go we're gonna take that we're gonna go in through the eye we go through the eye we have a tag in like this and we're gonna grab that tag end and we're just going to start working it up towards the eye. Hope this is coming in focused. And we're just going to let our finger follow it up so we don't roll over each other. And I'm going to do, I do a lot of wraps here. I do like 14 wraps. I don't do 13 because 13 is a bad number, I think. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to lose count here. Probably lost count already. Hope I don't stop at 13. That's it. All right, so we have this tag end here. We're going to push the line up and we're going to see that little loop come through. I'm gonna stick this guy through that tab and we're gonna just pull. Alright? Boom. And there is our snell. There's that first hook snelled, alright? Now we don't have to do this now, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna just give it a trim. And we'll leave that tag, alright? We're gonna keep your tag on that thing. I usually do this by eye this length, but I'm gonna have a tape measure for you guys to make things simple. Alright, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. This is not what I do. Alright? 20 inches. Boom, 20 inches. We're gonna cut it 20 inches. Boom. So we got a little friend here. We got the one hook on, 20 inches aligned. We're gonna go to the second hook. Put that thing in my mouth. Case of the day. Second hook. You could use Gamagatsu fours, fives. Fives are a little fairly large, but these are for big fish, so we're going for it, all right? So we're gonna take this. Same thing. But now we're just gonna give you a quick measure from this eye to this eye where we start that snell. It's gonna be about that big. 10 inches from this snell to the eye of this hook. We're gonna start that and we'll do the same thing back now, right? I know it's hard to see, but that's it, all right? So now we have this. Snell hook to snell hook, but it looks like the yin and the yang here. They're both snelled together. Now we go over to the D-ring. That's over here. All right, players, this is a key piece to this puzzle right here. So what we're gonna do now, to take these two hooks, stick them over that ring, right? We're gonna give them a nice tug, make sure they set up nicely. And then we're gonna hold and do a double overhand knot. We're gonna pull this exactly the same. Stick a finger on this guy here, I don't. And that's it, we're gonna pull. That pulls this exactly true. We'll take the snip here, the snipper. All right, please, so that's what we got right there, all right? The perfect snell, two hooks. Big bait, 30 pound test, that's it. How's that gonna go on? That's the question I get from everybody. All it does is it attaches to a dropper loop. I'm gonna do that real quick. Pretend this hard line is our leader material, all right? We're gonna pop a 
little barrel. This is a tuna barrel. This is a 130 pound test. You don't need that clearly, but you're going to have a barrel and now you're going to go to your leading material. That I usually do around a 60 pound test. I don't have that here. It's on the boat, but this is a 30 pound hard line. I'm just going to do a quick loop knot. All right. You could Google these how to do this, but I'm just going to go quickly do a loop knot for you cats and just show you how that snafu rig now attaches to the loop knot. That's it. I'm gonna take this guy, stick this guy, hold that in my mouth. I don't take this guy. So I go through here. Very simple. Yeah, that's it. That was ugly. It was quick and ugly, but that's a loop knot. I do it quick because I can do a million of these things. All right. Below the loop knot, two ways to do this. You could tie just a double overhand knot for your sinker. One, two. Of course, I don't have my things, but I have a razor. Cut that tag end off. That bottom one's a loop to your sinker. What happens? I got two sinkers in my hand, all right? You got your bank sink. Yeah, I'm in the middle of something. What's up? I don't know how it's going to play out, but... If I could hit her in the solar plexus right now, I would. Always F with me when I'm trying to do my thing here, all right? Loop to the sinker. So you got a bullet bank and a flat bank. Which one do you think is better? Bullet bank. Whoever said this? <laughs> Whoever said the bullet bank? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I use a flat bank. Why do we use a flat bank? Because what happens, it sits flat. It doesn't roll and the base just sits still on top of the structure or whatever. Bullets have a tendency to get deep and get into crevices, get you in trouble, all right? Sinker goes on real easy, goes through, pops through. Goes on like this, and we say, how you doing, ladies, to that? All right, you have your sinker. You have your dropper loop. Going to put that on. Boom, boom. That's how the snafu hangs on there. Two hooks. Very easy to change. I just pop them off. And grab a single. Bread and butter. Bread and butter. Is the main mood trig is the single, all right? But we're not doing the single today. If I'm taking people fishing to just begin, beginners, I prefer to use a single hook. Why do I prefer new jacks to use a single hook? Because what happens a lot of times is that snafu rig, as the fish eats it, it breaks into two and you have two baits going at once and you start setting on small bites and you start feeling that bait. Well, it's, you got the big guys going after this little portion, but you have a little guy picking this one. What happens, you're going to be setting up on small fish. You don't want that to happen. All right, folks, so there you have it. That right there is a snafu rig. Developed back in the day somewhere in Brooklyn by some Gindaloon, which you know the kid loves the Gindaloons. I mess with them. Why? Because they can take it. Gindaloons can take it. All right? Look at these Gindaloons. All right? Uh -huh. The freaking man mooch. But that's it right there. We're going back next episode. What are we doing? What the kid likes right there. We're going to do a quick touch up on how we're going to start doing the jig stuff. But I just want to touch base on one freaking thing here. The snafu rig. Big Coney Island. Whatever. I'm Those guys in Brooklyn. My boy Salvo, he's a, he's a Brooklyn boy. They use that stuff, all right? Do I use it? Yes, I do. Do I go crazy about it? I'm not too crazy about it. I'm a single hook guy, but whatever. I do like to, I, I'll, trust me, I'll be using that. Like I said before, I had a million of these things, but all the people on my boat lost every freaking flat bank I have. Back to bullets. The kid ain't getting taken care of, all right? Chantaloons on my boat, stealing my stuff, breaking my stuff. Losing my gear, it gets, it gets expensive. That's why the kids gotta get sponsors, all right? Check it easy, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Thanks for watching this episode of the Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. May the grace of God shine upon you and your family, always, all right? Stay in this favor, players. Pray for one another, love one another. Don't let these <laughs> divide us, all right? Make America great again. Peace, love, and soul. Guess what they my most gotta go.